Hey guys, what's going on? I got another 100 books going into my used bookstore, and I don't know if I've said this for a while, I think I did back in the early days, in the dark ages of the cell phone audio quality. I'll be honest with you, I'm not gonna read this book. But, in doing this, I'm trying to build an actual used bookstore. A couple years ago I realized that's what I wanted to do, I wanted to run a used bookstore, and I looked into the finances of it, and it just doesn't make sense, so this is kind of a compromise to do the eBay thing. But, I'm trying to create your classic used bookstore, where you go in and you can browse, and you can find cheap copies of books that you recognize, as well as the collectible ones behind the glass case. So, one of those books is The Three-Body Problem. I don't know if I've talked about this book on my channel yet, but I love The Three-Body Problem. I thought it had a lot of really interesting, unique ideas that were kind of out there, but still understandable. And a lot of people recently have started saying that it's overhyped, but that's not really the book's fault. That's the people's fault, including President Barack Obama endorsing it on the back here. Thanks, Obama. Again. And another familiar book you'd find in a used bookstore, All the Light We Cannot See. And that's kind of the appeal of walking into a used bookstore. Of course, having a, an online store, you don't get the smell, you don't get the feel, you don't get the sounds. I understand it's not the same thing, but you go in there and you don't know what you want. So you're trying to find something that speaks to you, which is kind of the opposite of what the eBay store does. You usually go to my store after having searched for a book that I have. But I was trying to create the experience of browsing digitally, which I know not a lot of people do. So, I stock these books that are popular that I'm not gonna make a lot of money on. I've had a few commenters ask me, what am I doing? I go out and I buy this book for a dollar from the thrift store. I sell it on my eBay store for six dollars. Is that worth going to buy it and packing it up and listing it and the time I spend doing it? No, not really. But again, I'm trying to create a used bookstore. It's not gonna be entirely rational. It's not gonna be entirely financially sound. But that's what I'm trying to do. Here's a popular one. I hear people like this guy, Brandon Sanderson. And you know what? I should probably put this on my shelf. I'm not a fantasy guy, but Brandon Sanderson has become so popular that there's gotta be something to it. Like Three Body Problem. Is it overhyped? Yeah, but it's because it's good. It's a really good book. This is probably gonna be similar. And that's another reason why I like having this used bookstore is because I have so many books to choose from to read. Any of these 100 books, it's technically in my personal library for a finite amount of time. More of a, a selfish reason for this. This one, my wife actually found at Goodwill. A Winston Churchill book. She was very proud of herself. But this is not the book you'd end up buying when you're browsing a used bookstore. This is one that you search for and you find. We're gonna see how much it's worth. 30, 40 bucks, yeah. My, my wife deserves to be proud of herself for that find. She goes to Goodwill for other reasons, but sometimes she'll go to the book section to see if she can uh, bring home something worthy of the shelves. It's another kind of obscure one. The Dragon's Teeth? Question mark? Some kind of nonfiction book about World War II aviation. Definitely a dad book. Yeah, that one is uh, maybe $10. Another glass case book, The Treason Trial of Aaron Burr. After he killed Alexander Hamilton in cold blood in the streets. This one is signed, I believe, with a little nice message to the recipient. Something about mint juleps, if I remember right. They were looking up a recipe for mint juleps. I remember this was worth a good amount of money. An obscure sale, again, not your browsing used bookstore book. Here is a beautiful book. Summer Mountains, The Timeless Landscape. I just picked this up the other day, and it's gotten to a point where I know the other people who are doing the same thing, who have used bookstores in their own home. One guy, Mike, he's nice. I, there's this, this air of competition around the whole thing where we're all trying to get the same resources, and the resources are somewhat scarce, and there's definitely been some conflict between other ones, but Mike's a good guy. I think we both understand that Yes, we are out for the same thing, but there is enough for everybody, and we're all trying to do the same thing. We are similar people, so why not be friendly with each other? He pointed this book out to me. Slipcase. Beautiful. Might give this as a, a gift to my uncle because he loves this kind of thing. And shout out to Mike because he actually watches my videos. Beautiful. And look at this. Interesting. 
Very interesting. This one might be somewhere in between the two categories, the making of the atomic bomb. I feel like this was somewhere between 20 and 25 dollars, and maybe after Oppenheimer, people have more of an interest in the atomic bomb, and if you sat through Oppenheimer, or especially if you read the book Oppenheimer, you'd be prepared for this massive feat. Ooh, there are pictures, but I, uh... I'm not going to show those pictures. Here's a nice little anthology of H.G. Wells stories. These always go well in the used bookstore. And of course, in my bookstore, the sci-fi section would be the biggest one. Which kind of involves having a big fantasy section as well. Oh, here's something that would probably not go in the used bookstore. They Live by John Carpenter. Not sure why I picked this up. I guess it must have value. I think I actually wanted to watch it, but I ended up just downloading it. Are right, a Salvatore, a familiar face. This is the omnibus for the Spell Swords trilogy. Big crease down the cover, unfortunately. But again, that's par for the course in a used bookstore. These are interesting. It's like a, a Star Trek Doctor Who crossover graphic novel. I believe worth a good amount of money. I mean, those are two fandoms that you can't miss with, right? I mean, if you're a Star Trek fan, you're a Doctor Who fan. Almost every time, uh, that was actually volume two, and this is volume one. It's always nice when you have multiple volumes to appeal to the collector. And I think these two could get like a hundred bucks. Much less valuable than I thought, but still, still a good, a good pickup from the thrift store. Another one, I think this has a lot of value, some sort of guide for Final Fantasy X2. And you think it would just be the sphere grid of the book, but it's kind of a strategy guide, but it's in Japanese. Which is always weird to sell foreign language books on eBay. You wonder what the market is for it, but apparently it has sold. Oh, and this is, look at that, it has a, a dust jacket for like a graphic novel. That's not something you see every day. Okay, if my mom is watching, look away. And that's gonna sound weird. Um, it's not how it sounds. It's actually clowns. My mom is terrified of clowns. So this book would be terrifying to her. Ron Lee's World of Clowns. But it is a beautiful book, if uh, you aren't scared of clowns. All about clown and clown collectibles. And here is where the eBay store has an advantage over the brick and mortar store because people that want clown stuff can easily find it. Where you go into a used bookstore looking for clown stuff, how often are you going to find that? Not very often. Star Wars Storybook, you find this in the thrift store. You know that's gotta be worth something. Old, Star Wars, good condition, guarantee. More Star Wars. My, my wife actually found these as well, so you gotta give her credit for those. Although, like I said, Star Wars, old. Although this isn't in great condition. It looks like it was in some sort of flooding situation, which is never good. But there's also the art of The Empire Strikes Back. And this color scheme on the front reminds me of like old Macintosh ads or something. Well, there's something triggering in my head right now, but I can't place it. Definitely not Star Wars. Similar concept here. Like I said, always good when you sell it in a set, appeal to the collector, who is oftentimes a Star Wars fan, as you may have known. All right, it's a trio of Halo books. Sold these before, always goes over well. These kind of books are always in bad condition. I wonder, I wonder what's going on with the Halo fans. Sarah J. Moss. Now here is a used bookstore cornerstone. These are the newer ones, A Court of Thorns and Roses, which I really like. I, I like the, uh, the bold color choices, and they would look really nice on a shelf together, and they're going to look really nice in a listing together. I love that mint green. It's one of my favorite colors. I know there's more. I think there's more that I don't have, but those will sell fine by themselves. But here are the older ones. And they actually just discontinued these books, so they are technically out of print, and therefore a lot more valuable on eBay. So if you see them out there, definitely pick them up. Condition really matters for these books. I feel like Sarah J. Moss fans are some of the most fierce collectors out there, but you wouldn't expect it. They really love the aesthetics of these books. And I do too, I mean, they look really nice. Speaking of aesthetics, not in a good way, here is um, what I imagine to be the full series of these books. But unfortunately, they went through a bunch of different publishers or a bunch of different design choices, and it's just all over the place. 
Uh, but Wicked is the first one. And then I think it's this uh, very, very big divergence in, in design from this one. But then they kind of went back to that first design, which I do like, or maybe there's another edition out there that looks like that. I think these are all four of the books. Maybe there's more. I actually found a Vonnegut book I haven't seen out there. Armageddon, Armageddon in retrospect. I think this is a collection of some of his unpublished stories after his death, which are, you know, probably gonna be hit or miss, but I'm certainly gonna read it. I love this author photo on the back there. I aspire to be this kind of man one day, surrounded by hydrangeas, got a quirky little knickknack that you found in the thrift store above you. So that's going on my TBR, as well as this one, Slapstick by Kurt Vonnegut. I think this was his first novel. Well, no, Sirens of Titan was his first novel, I thought. Uh, well, maybe an early novel, and luckily it has the design of some of the other books I have, so. It's gonna look nice on the shelf. Here we got a bunch of classic books. I know a lot of people don't like these Barnes & Noble classics. I think they look good. I pick them up when I find them in good condition. Got Walden here. Well, first let me show you the bulk of them. That's gonna be a nice lot. And they look good on the shelf together. I mean, these are a lot of similarly colored ones, as it turned out. Kind of some a muted color palette. But we got Walden. Is the all-time classic, The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. You know how I feel about Oscar Wilde, but I think he does deserve another read. The Beautiful and the Damned by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I feel like this could be an alternate title for The Great Gatsby, so maybe he's just riffing on that same thing again. I'm not sure, I haven't heard of that one. Treasure Island, you already know about that one. Alice's Adventures Through the Looking Glass. I like selling these uh, Barnes & Nobles lotted up because there's so many Classics, as you may imagine. <laughs> Uncle Tom's Cabin. Pretty much every name is recognizable. Some of the, although, here we go, this one is not actually, but definitely intriguing. If I were to read one of these, it would probably be this one. Because I already have uh, this one on my shelf, The Wasteland. But like I was saying, some Oxford classics and some Penguin classics, they have these obscure titles that you don't know anything about. So uh, it's nice to have an idea about all of these. Actually, this one might be the one I read. The Interpretation of Dreams by Freud. Although, interesting enough, and then this much of it though? I don't know if I could take that much dream interpretation in a single book. And we got some of these NYRB books, which I now know is the New York Review of Books. Just one nugget of information that I've acquired here on BookTube, thanks to you guys. I like the design on these as well. Although, these books, speaking of unrecognizable titles, Pretty much every single one of these is an unrecognizable title. They obviously try and go for more obscure works. But the design on them, I, I am intrigued to read them. Although I have to say, I've never read an NYRB classic. They're not classics, they're just NYRB book. Okay, we're running out of room already. Clara and the Sun by Ishiguro. I think this is going on my TBR. I'm kind of in the middle because I love Never Let Me Go, but I hated The Buried Giant, so where does that leave me with Ishiguro? And I've heard mixed reviews on this one. So, anyone read that one? What do you think? Worth it or not? The Radium Girls, and also The Women They Could Not Silence. I've sold The Radium Girls a whole bunch of times, but I haven't even seen this other book, and obviously it was meant to go they're not the same height though. Why would they do this? Brutal. But anyways, they'll go nice as a set together. I hate the incongruity of it, but it is what it is. A bunch of bird watching field guides. And I mean a bunch of them and they're very heavy, my God. I, I always buy these when I see them. I don't really know if they sell very well, but it's gotten to the point where I have so many of them, I have to do something with them. So I'm hoping that they do sell. I'm looking for a big one so that I can take some of the pictures out and frame them or put them in some kind of collage. These would work for them, but the collage would be a lot smaller, which could be a, a fun craft project. Especially these, that's, that's, a, that's a nice one. And that would require a lot more uh, dexterity with the X-Acto knife, maybe more dexterity than I have. Here is a big hardcover Eric Larson lot that I hope to sell. I do have a lot of his books bundled up, but they're paperback books. And maybe I'm making some assumptions here, but I feel like the average reader of Eric Larson is older than 50, and I have noticed that older people like hardcover books. Um, tell me if I'm wrong. It is an assumption I'm making. 
based on age, but that is what I have seen. I don't like hardcover books. Oh, still got a sticker on that one, my apologies. It's got tape on this one too. What's going on there? Um, but I do expect for this hardcover Eric Larson lot to sell better than the paperback one. I could be wrong, could definitely be wrong. Here is one, I'm not sure if I would put it in the glass case. The Super Little Giant Book of Dragons. It's about dragons, so I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna put it in my used bookstore because I love dragons, who doesn't like dragons? When you look it up on eBay, there are not a lot of listings and they are all above $200. And then when you look outside of eBay, there are other places selling it for a similar amount. Of course, there's no sold copies, so I'm wondering if at some point in time, someone listed it for a large amount of money and then everyone else assumed that it was worth that money even though it's worth nothing. So, could be worth anything. And I gotta figure out what I would like to sell it for. I mean, it's a cool book. Is, is it anything particularly special? I don't know. I mean, I, I love how small it is. Does that make it worth $200? I don't know, that's kind of a complicated question. What makes a book worth $200? Just that someone's willing to pay $200 for it, I guess. All right, here's some Tertiary Tolkien Tales. That must be a nice title. Tertiary Tolkien Tales. And uh, I wonder, do you guys think The Hobbit is a, is a Tertiary Tolkien Tale? Probably not, but it, it kind of fit aesthetically with these other books, so I included it. Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. That's kind of a rare one. I've never seen this out in the wild before. The Silmarillion. First try. I said that correctly. Beautiful. And, uh, yes, tertiary tales. Indeed. Beautifully, aesthetically pleasing, congruent lot of books there. And I think it's time for another Redwall lot. My other one sold. I didn't actually read these as a kid, so I don't know the sequencing of them. We got the Ender's Game. This is out of order. Can't have that. Hopefully that's the proper order. We got all of the Ender's Games books. Actually, no, I can't say. Definitely not all the Ender's Game books, but we have a large selection of the Ender's Games books. I sold really well last time. Even these, uh, I don't wanna call them ripoff, but spinoff, that's the word by another author sold really well bundled up. And I know that Orson Scott Card said something or did something and a lot of people just refused to read his stuff, but he's probably not benefiting from the sale of a used book. And I don't remember any kind of overtly immoral things happening in Ender's Game or Speaker for the Dead. So can we not separate the artist from the art there? Here is a Spanish encyclopedia for the world of Tolkien. Another weird one. Again, I'm not sure how likely it is to make a sale for a foreign language book on eBay, but it is obscure enough to be a, an interesting addition to my used bookstore. Now here's another interesting one, The 48 Laws of Power. I have a couple copies of this. It sells really well. If you haven't heard about it, let me read you a brief excerpt. Pose as a friend, work as a spy. Commit to nobody. Avoid the unhappy and the unlucky. It's, it's laws that you should live by in order to kind of win in social situations. Make other people come to you, use bait if necessary. And the author, I've heard him talk and he says that this is not a book of rules to live by, but a book of rules to be aware of so that you cannot be manipulated when other people use them. Which sounds good, but you know, who knows. This book is banned in a lot of prisons, and I was looking it up when I was talking about banned books in one of my last videos. For everyone that's saying books should never be banned, then you also have to say this book should never be banned in prisons, but I think a lot of people would agree that it should be. So, the question I have is, should I sell it in my store? Because that is kind of perpetuating the information. I, I, I am allowing people to access the information but who am I to block people from obtaining information? I am benefiting financially, which offers a whole nother mental obstacle, but I've been struggling with that. Again, I have a couple copies of this. I don't know whether to burn them or to sell them. What do you think? What, sh what should I do? They're not, it's like 10 bucks maybe for the book, but. All right, I found these two just yesterday, Ancillary Sword and Ancillary Mercy which is good because I've had 
This book sitting in my store for a long time now. The first one, Ancillary Justice, which I read, which I didn't really like, and I was surprised to see. I think it won the Hugo. A lot of people rave about it. Not my cup of tea. So now I got the full trilogy. That'll definitely sell, I assume. I mean, there's so much hype behind it. Everyone loves the book. And uh, that's another one. You find this in a used bookstore, uh, I don't know, maybe it's going to be like $9.99 or something. And you're happy. It's a book that you didn't know you wanted to read going in, but you've heard a lot of good stuff about it. And then you find it for a, a good price. And everyone's happy. Cassandra Clark, Lady Midnight. I don't generally pick up these books. I made that mistake when I first started my used bookstore and I got a full set of the Mortal Instruments, I think it's called, but they are not worth anything. This one though is in mint condition and it is signed. Although, is that signed? It's a stamp with some squiggles that start with C and C. Anyone could have stamped that. So, I mean, I looked it up, that is her signature. But a little suspect, if you ask me. Here's an old copy of A Wrinkle in Time. Uh, definitely behind the glass case. I forget exactly when it was. Oh, this is interesting. A little stamp that makes sure all of uh, this lady's books come back to her. A little pretentious, if you ask me, but you know, you gotta, you gotta protect your, your library. 1962. Another thing I like about used bookstores, you gotta have the glass case with the first edition, first print, wrinkle in time, and a few novelties that you're probably not gonna sell. But it's nice for fellow bibliophiles to come in and see some interesting books. A Dragon Lover's Treasury. Like I said, whenever I see a dragon, I'm probably gonna buy it. This is a book of short stories that are connected by dragons. And it's got a shiny cover. I feel like in a, in a physical used bookstore, in a more typical used bookstore, this book would not last long on the shelf because it has texture to the front of it and it's got a dragon on it and it's shiny. These things you can't really portray in a listing that is the downfall. Here's something random. Design is one by some dude and it's kind of a lot of uh, abstract design things. <laughs> I don't really know uh, what to call this images that are aesthetically pleasing, I guess. Uh, very uncomfortable looking couches, that kind of thing. And I think I picked this up because it was signed. Signed in pencil, it looks like. It must be worth something, right? If I, if I picked it up. Two copies for sale, both for 120 bucks. One copy sold for $5.99. So, <laughs> could go anywhere in between there. All right, here is a series of books that I think I will start collecting. I know I can't say that very often, but I love the design on these. I have sold them in the past, unfortunately. I regret that now. They're called Olive Editions. I'm not familiar with, uh, with this book, so I don't know if they're going for a theme or if these are classic books or contemporary books. And Patchett, I think that's a contemporary author. So I don't think that they're classics. Oh, and Ursula K. Le Guin, I forgot. I'm gonna read this one. Don't know anything about it, but it's a beautiful book, and it's purple, and it's by one of my favorite authors, so that's all I need to put it on my TBR. Got a bookmark in there too, it's always nice. Warhammer 40k books, another used bookstore staple. If you see these on any shelf in any thrift store, you know it is worth it. Dan Abnett, not quite as powerful as R.A. Salvatore, but definitely a beast in his own right. It's amazing how much this guy manages to create. And lastly, the last five books here are Death Gate novels by the all-star duo Margaret Weiss and Trary, Cherry Hickman. I, why do I say Cherry Hickman? Tracy Hickman, the all-star duo uh, dragons. Those are the dragon ladies. I have volume one, three, and four, unfortunately. I hate that. So I'll have to search out volume two before I sell these because that wouldn't be right. And this is my entire used bookstore right here. I mean, that's not true. There's a shelf underneath and there's a few books piled up over there. But when you think about a used bookstore you walk into and how many books are in there, I, I think I have too many books 
as it is. But, of course, adding these hundred will just be a small drop in the ocean because in a used bookstore I'd like for people to come in here and browse my shelves, but they'd be done in like five minutes. And in a good used bookstore, you're there for hours. So it's really kind of humbled me to the fact of how many books a good used bookstore actually has and how expensive it would be to maintain that amount of space, especially if you're renting it, just to sell books. And unfortunately, there's a used bookstore near me that went out and that's why I was thinking about starting my own. But when you're there, and you just wonder how much money can this place possibly be pulling in to pay the rent and the time and all the other expenses. I don't know how they stay afloat unless they're like a, an institution like the book barn here in Southern Connecticut where everyone goes and it's kind of, you make pilgrimages there every year. So I'm thankful for eBay and I'm thankful to everyone that buys from my store that allows me to own this used bookstore and operate it and to uh, kind of achieve that. Oh, I almost forgot. I received this book in the mail from a viewer, Night Owl Media, The Changeling, which is a modern book. I think it's like a horror thriller. He sent me Sea of Rust previously, and I read that one, I enjoyed it. And he, he's keeping me modern because whenever I pick a book to read, it's always like 70s, 80s. But this, I think, is a new book, as was Sea of Rust, new-ish. So I, I thank you for keeping me in the modern era. I do appreciate that. I think I might do a delve into other genres pretty soon. So maybe some fantasy, some horror, some thrillers. That will be that. And that's what I got for you guys today. So as always, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.